Hey, welcome back to another Black City Coffee vlog. This video, just doing a little quality control here. That's that pre-blend shadow cap that I messed up on in the last video, and I'm I'm doing it here again, and I'm just gonna cup it and see. What I wanted to do in this video is to show you my new SEA third wave water blend <laughs> or recipe. Um, it's not my recipe. I actually got it from Whole Latte Love. I thought it might be useful just to show you how I did it. There's many recipes out there and I wanted to just start with the basic one. I took two one liter bottles, one gallon bottle. Um, I took all the labels off and then made my own labels. So one you're going to label uh, alkaline or buffer and the recipe for this is half a teaspoon of baking soda. Okay, so that's just for the buffer. And then for your magnesium or Epsom salt, it's uh, two and a quarter teaspoons of that. We have an RO or reversed osmosis water system here. So I just used that. Um, and then this was just a gallon of, dist of um, spring water. Poured that out into, you know, just drank it or plants or whatever, and then replaced it with my RO water, okay? So I had that set aside and I just labeled it SE SEA water. What I just did was baking soda, just like this. Half a teaspoon of this, right into a full bottle of RO water here in one liter. And then with the Epsom salts, I literally just had Epsom salt for sprains and apparently a laxative. <laughs> and then I put two and a quarter teaspoons of Epsom salt in this one, shook it up really good. What we're gonna do now is these are like concentrates and we're gonna keep pouring this into our one gallon uh, as we need it, right? So what we're gonna pour in is 185 mils of this and I wrote it down here, 63 mils of this. And I thought it'd be helpful for myself just to write them down on these labels so that I know the next time when I'm done with this and I fill this up, um, now I just need to uh, replace whatever I'm putting from here into here, okay? 185 plus 63 is 248, okay? So I will take out 248 mils from my one gallon jug here, which is, you can convert that into uh, grams or into milliliters. Um, and then I'm going to pour that amount of these in here. So for example, I would do, after I took out 248 mils of this RO water, then I would put this back on the scale and then put in 185 of the buffer. And then I would put 63 mils of the magnesium, okay? And then this would now become my new SEA water that I would use for brewing, for cupping even. Um, I'm starting to do that now. Now that I have a, like a more reliable way and I'm comfortable uh, with this third wave water recipe or this SEA water uh, recipe. And uh, I was kind of waiting. I still had a, a bunch of these third wave water things. I think this will be cool just to like in a pinch, like in a pinch, I didn't make something. And so I have this you know, like a just in case, but that's nice. So that's my little third wave water. And now we're going to uh, finally start cupping with this type of water and see if I can even taste the difference. So I have some warmed up here and we're just gonna like do a little quality control test. I need to rinse this. I typically wouldn't use this um, kind of kettle for cupping just cause you see how the flow rate is so controlled. And so I would like that more like a ag aggressive nozzle. It just wouldn't want to be practical for if I had a lot of cups. I don't know. I thought that would be helpful because I was searching and uh, I asked a friend who was super into it. He gets very nerdy about it. And I was like, I don't know if that's my speed. You know, I'm, I do want to use the right water. And so definitely this is SEA approved. We're in spec with this. Um, but I don't want to, I don't know if I want to go too crazy yet. Cause I don't even know if I could taste the difference. So, um, that's my recipe here. I'll put in the description. Also link whole latte love as well in the description. In other news, something very exciting is coming on Thursday. It's my little sample roaster. Uh, so I will be going live and somebody had requested that I do like a live unboxing. So yeah, I thought that'd be fun. 
and I thought it would be a good way for me to practice on doing better live shows because I, I definitely don't want that grid there again and I just want to do a better job. So that'll give me another chance to um, to try again. But yeah, Thursday it's coming and then Friday we're going to go live. And I think I have a scheduled stream out there that you can set a reminder for so you can hang out with me if you want to. I know it'll be kind of like at an odd time, like in the morning, but that's the only time I'll have sort of free to, to do that kind of thing. So, so this is Shadow Cat or Espresso Blend. And again, what I'm looking for is um, a solid chocolate base, but, but um, not, not too boring. And I definitely want it to be sweet, you know, and you don't, you don't taste that, that incredible sweetness until you do pull a shot of espresso with this. Um, but I think I will be able to at least taste, you know, do, does it match the uh, pre-blend? Cause this is a, uh, the post blend, sorry. Does it match the post, match the post blend to this pre blend? 248. I think I should write that down on here. It's like take out 248. Try to always have, you know, a little shorthand. 248 grams out. So little, little notes for myself so that I can make stuff really easy for me to remember and I don't have to keep looking up the recipe. So yeah, this should last me for quite some time. I think they said like this will last like, 15 gallons, this allows like 12 gallons, something like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is much easier than doing my old method, which was this. This is this is half a gallon. So I had to make many more trips and I was halving that little um that little packet. Sachet. Sachet. Alright, whatever. Okay. Stop. Clear start. Okay, so we'll break the crust. And then we'll cup it, and then of course we'll actually go and pull a shot. Um, and see if it makes sense. So when you when you know when you're making blends and you're just trying to decide like is it good as a pre-blend? You know blends are a lot of work, and um, sometimes I, I feel like they're cheaper. Some blends are cheaper because you know the beans inside are cheaper, but they do take a lot of work. If you know if you buy a blend from a from a good roaster who's like doing all the work behind trying to make sure like the the quality of the blend is very good. Um, I think it's it's definitely something that I misunderstood uh, before getting into coffee and that, you know, nobody really explained. And so that's part of our job, I think, like as um, maybe as home roasters or people in the coffee industry is to keep educating people about what goes into specialty coffee, blends, espresso blends, regular pour of a blend, blend, little blends. What's the difference, you know? Why should I be excited or what should I look for? Or what are the things, you know? Be curious about it. All right, we're still, this is still, this is gonna be way too hot, so we're gonna wait. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna just see, we're gonna wait. We have a new set here too. Good vibes and also Christmas. <laughs> I love Christmas. It's like one of my favorite holidays. And so I've been really enjoying just like decorating the home, making it feel very festive and uh, creating sort of like a new theme every year, I think is something that I want to do moving forward. Anyway, wherever you are in the world watching this, I hope you're having, uh, you're getting ready for the holidays. We just celebrated, um, we're going to celebrate Thanksgiving pretty soon and then Christmas comes and then um, that's always like a really fun time over here. So if you don't celebrate it or whatever, cool. Um, the bottom line is it's a, it's a, it's a time to kind of like reflect and, um, hopefully relax, you know, feel the spirit of being together and finishing another year uh, on this earth and, uh, just like reflecting back on your life so far. And hopefully you've done some stuff that you were proud of. Um, Maybe some stuff you could do better. And um, hopefully accepting where you are right now. Because all of us, you know, whether you're ambitious or not or whatever, 
um, maybe you're not where you want to be, but to still accept that and to still be grateful for the time that you have here, you know, I think that's really important. And that's, that's what I love about the holidays too, this time of reflection. Yeah, all right, cool. So even though I'm at four minutes, I can taste the acidity. There's a, and, and what that taste is like, is like you get these little tingly things on the side of your tongue, on the sides. That tells me that there's good acidity, right? Um, and if I'm trying to match it to uh, a post blend, yeah, I think we got it. I'm tasting that chocolate, cocoa nib. Um, I don't know if that mango's coming through though. That's probably something that I'll have to taste when I actually pull a shot. So we'll do that next. Um, I'll do that on my own, but basically I'm just looking to make sure like it's solid in the cup. Okay, cool. Let me go see how it's going to taste for the customer when they actually pull a shot. And like, even that, it won't be, you know, exactly what, uh, what I intend for you to taste. Cause maybe you're using different machine, different water, different, uh, warm up procedure with the espresso machine. So there's a lot of things to like. I get a lot of variables that could um, maybe get in the way of you not tasting what I'm tasting. But definitely what I intend is like, you should be able to taste chocolate if you're down for the chocolate and you should be able to get a little bit of brightness in the cup, even though you can't go like, oh yeah, that's plum or oh yeah, that's mango. Um, those are all really subjective notes of like what popped into my brain based on my preference, right? Um, and what I've tasted. Maybe you've never even tasted a mango before. Like that could happen, right? <laughs> but you will be able to taste a brightness in the cup. There's little like tingly things on the sides of your tongue for sure. And uh, you definitely will get that chocolate thing. We got some really good body here. It's super rich. It's like a, it's almost, it's almost like a spread, like a Nutella spread. That's how it's feeling in my mouth. That's sort of finished. Yeah, very good, cool. So this checks the box. I, I kind of knew it would. I just had to get the ratios right, but always got a test and then always got a cup. So uh, just to make sure, just to validate, even though I assumed it, you know, and I called it, um, again, it's still, we're still not 100% sure to be labeling this as a uh, okay as a pre-blend, cause we still gotta pull the shot and see if it tastes the same but this is a really good sign. And so those are little things like little boxes that you check off as a roaster to make sure, you know, the quality control is there. All right, cool. So that was it today, pretty short. Um, is it short? <laughs> it's not short, but thanks for hanging out. And maybe I'll see you uh, on the live stream on Friday. We're probably gonna do it in the morning sometime. Um, it's just for me, I, I really like the live because it also helps me not edit <laughs> and editing takes a lot of time so um yeah we'll see you then and thank you so much for watching subscribe for more content like this like this video if you did see you in the next one bye